Good morning. The job numbers continue to head in the direction the Fed actually wants to see them, but not where people who had jobs are necessarily ha happy. Good morning. This is uh, my name is Brendan. I'm with the Holmes Orlando team. Hi to my mom. She hey, missed me the past couple weeks. I'm I'm back. I'm so sorry. All my <laughs> loyal fans or fan, one of them. I've got somebody. Um, but yeah, it's good to be back. I feel like it's been forever since I've been able to jump on the broadcast. I'm so sorry. Um, just a lot of doctor appointments and things going on. Um, don't worry, guys. I'm not nothing too crazy, but you know, some stuff I got to make sure I take care. I'm glad you feel glad. Actually, you're feeling well and stuff. All right. Well, let's just hop into this because this was just kind of interesting. This came out this morning. Job cut announcements jumped in August. We're up 210% year to date. We but basically- I thought, I thought everything was great. I thought the feds were saying everything's awesome. Well, you know, they did revise the numbers down 300 and something thousand. We did. We I remember talking about this, but it felt like, how did, how did, how did that feel like such a small blip on the radar? Like, I- like, hey, we had this massive revision. We've been off by more than 10% over the last year, and uh, nobody picked it up. None of these news stations, no, nobody talked about that. No, no. And what did the stock market do? Rallied. Woo! Woo! Yeah, it's like, okay, the more bad news we seem to put out there, the better the stock market does. It's always weird. Yeah. Which then it helps that us was because it makes Powell feel like, yeah, you know, he's like, wait a minute. See, we are. We're, we're doing good. Got it, got it in the behind. Yep. So, I mean, his whole goal was to cause pain. So, looks like he's causing some good pain. You know, and then yesterday, we got the JOLTS, which is the Job Openings and Labor Turnover Report. Yep. And we saw the number of job openings edge down to 8.8 .8 million. Yep. And when you look at that, Compared to previous, we dropped over 300,000 job openings. That's a lot. In the past month. That's a whole and lot. From, yeah. And from July of last year, we've gone from a le over 11 million down to 8.8 .8 million. But wait, doesn't that, that just mean that there's more people that have a job? No. Wait, no, wait, what? No. Isn't that, isn't that how I mean, it would be like, we, we, we would spin it that way, right? Like we could spin it and be like, look, we've got so, so many people are employed. Employment rate's so low because look at how few jobs we have available. We've got less jobs available. But what's really going on here? What's really going on is companies, if someone's leaving, isn't rehiring for those positions. And positions that they may have put out there previously, oh, well, maybe we really don't need that person. Let's pull that back off yeah i've, I've, I've seen, seen this lot in conversation a lot with people with uh, friends and associates in the tech industries they're seeing mm -hmm. a lot more of pullback in, in these high paid salary developer positions because you know even with talking to one of my good friends that works for you know a very very big company in the tech space he was kind of just like there's certain people that i don't know if they actually do work like yep they're on staff to kind of bloat the numbers to make that company look better. Interesting. And we do know, because we, we pointed it out a couple of weeks ago, that the online recruiting companies have stated that they're down, that their ex earnings expectations are down because mm -hmm. people aren't willing to post ops. So everything is really lining up, if you really look at it, that their narrative that this is a strong jobs market is baloney. It's baloney. And when you really look at the numbers, and that's always the thing is you, you've you got to look at these numbers to, to really take a look. Mm -hmm. And you're starting to see it when you look at what U.S. consumers are saying. Right now, it's at a 13-year high that U.S. consumers say it's a bind to buy a house. I mean, interest rates aren't pretty. Job market, a lot of fear in the job market. Interest rates aren't great. Yep. And prices haven't pulled pulled back really. The Michigan, you know, monthly um, survey of consumer of that's pulling back as well. The index of consumer sentiment. We'll see. July we're sitting at 71. August we pulled back to 69. So you're 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 gonna see 
it, it's going to be a tightening. You know, will it be a full blown on recession? I don't know yet. Yeah. I don't know. But I've, I've read where people say if it is, it's going to be a white collar recession, like you and I have talked about. It's that middle management, higher level tech companies, that type that are going to see the probably the biggest impact of this pullback. Mm -hmm. But what have we seen? How have we seen the bond market react to all of this? We've actually seen a pleasant pullback. Kind of liking it. I like that graph. That's a yeah. nice graph. We got a we got a little peak over here. You know, we jumped to four point two eight, and then ooh, we got a little little bad news with the jobs market. Whoop, pulled back. Got some more bad news. Pulled back, and then you see here where the jolt came out yesterday, and it pulled back a little bit again. Mm -hmm. uh, to continue to see this pull back over the next several months. Yeah. Because I, 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 I think I think this fall could be a very good buying opportunity for yeah. a lot of people who have sat on the sat on the sidelines. I, I agree with you on that. And the big key here is I think the only way we see this kind of go the opposite direction is if we see the Fed start m messing with that overnight fund rate again. And mm -hmm. That's my biggest worry is, you know, Powell basically, if he if he sniffs any type of positive news, he's going to want to jump in, increase it. Yeah. Well, so well, we, what we got everything to look bad. Yeah. Right now, everyone's pretty much, you got 88% are saying that September, he's not doing anything. Yep. I think you and I both agree on that, is that he's not going to do anything. Which that sentiment from the experts, that, that sentimentally just in the last couple of days, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yep. But what's interesting is when we go to that November meeting, that November meeting right now, you got about 55% of people saying that they're not going to do anything. Because Powell's come out and said he's he's not done. If he needs to do another increase, he's going to do another increase. Yep. But I think if we continue to look at the revised ones, I mm -hmm. think this sentiment would totally change. You've actually got 40% yeah. who think that he's going to do a quarter point increase yep. in November. With what's going on in China, China, they're, they're a freaking mess. Their producer price index came out this morning, and they're still sitting, they're still sitting negative. I think they came mm -hmm. out somewhere around 49%, not as slow as usual. Mm -hmm. Then you've got um, Country Garden which is one of the biggest developers over there, notifying that they're going to default. Yeah, just default. They're just going to default. So the Chinese government's trying to come up with a solution to come in and save them. Well, how do you save them? Well, you're going to have to probably devalue the yuan further yeah. to do that, which isn't yeah. going to help help China at all, any manner whatsoever. And, and that's a big balance that they've got. Like They're in a lose-lose position right now with what's going on. Um, yeah, you know, and that's the hard part is what's going to be, uh, but we're going to see some residual effect. It will China like that will have an impact on us. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, they are they are the world's biggest manufacturer. They drive manufacturing throughout the world. So it's what happens to them. You know, being the second largest economy is definitely going to have an effect on our overall economy. And this was something I I pulled up today that I just wanted to take a look at because this is something we interest rates are affecting and this could could continue to keep interest rates up and that's how much of our tax revenue goes to the debt payment every year we had dropped to about 20 percent of tax revenue and in the past year we've jumped to about 37 percent of all government tax revenue is being used to pay the interest on the debt. Gosh, that's so, ugly. That's ugly. I mean, you imagine if someone came to you and they had that number and they were trying to qualify for, for a home mortgage. Uh, well, you know, we'll give it so. I mean, really, what would you say to them? What could you say to them? What could you? Be like, hey, uh, um, yeah, slow down your spending. Yeah, I'm Wait, sorry. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 
You need to get your spending under control. You need to get some of your de debt paid off, a majority of your debt paid off. I mean, we're sitting at $33 trillion in debt right now. It's decent numbers. Yeah. Rookie number. Rookie yep. number. Yep. So, I mean, overall, it's we're seeing the effects of all these rate changes. Yep. And I just, if we can, if they can do the soft landing, I'm just, I get worried when you look at the numbers and you see how they're jumping. A 210 is a big number. Yeah. That's a big number. And you start think now you start thinking, okay, even though delinquents are at an all time low, something like that's going to start forcing them up. And is that when we start seeing the foreclosures start coming to the market? They're try. I mean, they've tried to come up with solutions. You know, the re the the um, forty year mortgage, mm -hmm. so that hey, if we can put you into a forty year mortgage, keep you in the house, we want to try and keep you in the house. But still, if you don't have a job, you still can't make the payment. But that's that's my concern. Is I mean, we're, fortunately, um, you know, where we live, we've we've been fairly consistent. Mm -hmm. We're not having the highs and lows. So Orlando's been pretty steady, but you're seeing other parts of the country really, really start to take some hits yep. on the jobs. And like you said, the tech companies, certain areas of California and San Francisco, where you've already seen, you know, 20, 30 percent drop in home prices over the past year. It's some, something we really, really need to keep, keep an eye on. So let's hop in to our numbers. Central Florida. For Central Florida, have we just... Flat line far ahead. I don't have a problem with that. What's mm -hmm. at? We had 410 this week, but this is the number that really stands out. And just I was I was completely shocked. Our single family inventory increased by a hundred. Oh wow, homes. that's big. That's huge. I think the largest. I think we had one over a hundred. What maybe about a month ago, and yeah. it just broke a hundred. But 184. Yeah. That's that's a big increase. Our condos, this has actually started to take a dive. And the that inventory continues to increase. And what we look at every week, you know, is our original list price, the final list price. And we see we're sitting around that 95, 95 and a half percent. So people are having to do price cuts in order to sell their houses. Yep. It's, it's not that Oh, 100%, 101. And then your final list, you've still got room to negotiate in there as well. You're mm -hmm. getting two, roughly about 2% off. So on a $500,000 house, that's a that's a $10,000 negotiation. Average days on market, we're sitting at 40. That's just a, I think that's pretty flat line. And then we see graphically, here's our prices. I mean, we're not seeing the increase. Interesting enough, I Zillow's coming out and saying they're expecting a 6% increase next year. And I'm like, how do you calculate that with the current interest rates? I mean, those estimates have been spot on, so I, I understand. That yeah. Don't get old. I don't know why. But I, I mean, a 6%, that's interesting. Like, that's that's a positive. That's a very positive forecast there. It is. It's just like, but you run the numbers. It's like, I don't know anyone expecting a 6% income increase next year no no so how can you jump it yeah you're gonna sell your car so you don't have to pay for it you know get an old junker so you can get that five hundred six hundred thousand dollar house there you go well maybe they're maybe zillow is forecasting they're putting a lot of propensity in rates going down is what i'm presuming i've seen that by by a lot of people too i um, was listening to a report the other day and they're saying by you know, mid year next year, they're expecting to be back down in low fives. Low fives. Whew. And I'm like, what? I mean, I will not cry if that happens, but I'm no, not either will I. either. Neither will I, but I'm just looking economically and Powell, Powell just, he's not, he's not looking to cut right now. No. And, and, and the thing is, is if, any movement, if, if we were a half percent lower in interest rates, it would drive the housing industry would go bananas right now. If, if in October, all of a sudden rates were at a six and a half, October would be the best month of the year. Yep. 
And here's yep. the thing. If that happens, Powell's going to do what? He's going to increase rates. He's going to increase in, in November. So Because he's going to want to make sure that, boop, nope, we, we've got a hot market. We need to cool it down. He's going to pull it up. Yep, exactly. exactly. So we're not going to see anything like that. Yep. Then you see here, really, the past six, seven weeks, it has just been almost a flat line right across that 400 home sales mm -hmm. yeah. per week. A little bit low above, a little below. And this is the one I like to see, total actives. We have been doing a steady increase since April. Yep. And look at this. And this is it right here. We are only low where we were in November. In January. January. In January, if you remember, things kind of started to heat up because there was some input to look at. So we're getting to that point where there's actually starting to be some inventory to yep. look at. And once this goes positive, I think we see a big swing to the buyer and those numbers, that original list, the final sales price, I think we start seeing a bigger drop in there yes. than we have in the past. And our days on market is continuing to stay higher than, than, than it has been recently, holding that 40. And because everything's lagging with the with the rate increases we had, you know, pretty much all of August, which was just brutal. Mm -hmm. I think over the next couple of weeks, we see this jump maybe to 45, 46. Days I think you're right. On there. Then we get in the same thing. Original list to no list to sales price, 97 and a half there as well. Yep. Our days on market sitting at 30. Then our weekly sales, you see here, we've really are starting to dip on the number of sales mm -hmm. in the condos. Yeah. Well, but like, at the same time, higher rates, like the condo is going to have the bigger impact. Right? Yeah. They have those HOA dues, the condo dues that are significant. Plus, yeah. and, and every and all of them has been crushed by the insurance increases. Oh, yeah. All of them. But then you see here, I mean, we are almost 20% above where we were in January. So the condo market is really. Turning in, turning the numbers are favoring the buyer at this time more than they have in in, in a long time. Mm -hmm. That's where you see the market kind. Of, and I just I got a I got a funny feeling that come October, November, if we can get Powell to hold his hold his his level, I think we could see October, November, December turn into good buying opportunities. And if we can continue to see that. 10 year T pull back down. Mm -hmm. I think one, if we can get below that 4% yeah. on the 10 year, that should put us below this, the 7% rate. Yeah. Right? That should put us right around seven again. Yeah. Just below a hair below. Um, yeah. We just want to see it there. Right. Like I don't need it to fly down. Like, cause I think too big of a drop down will cause a reaction from the feds. We mm -hmm. need to gradually drop. Yep. Yeah. I just, I think this month is kind of a breather month. Okay, let's. I was gonna be like, okay, we've had some not so good numbers. Then hope you know, October is flat. October's go going into October's flat. I think I think we can can continue to see a pullback. Yep. Which will finally, I think that will help get some people sidelines. And December oftentimes is a very good month. For people because move you're gonna move during that that break period. Yep. So it can put some of those those families back into the market. But just having that breather in the rate mm -hmm. could could help us. Yeah. Just back up a little bit. Absolutely. So. I think you're right. All right. Thank you all. Um please don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll see you again next Thursday. Great to have you back, Joe. My mom will be super happy. Good. Happy to be back. Talk to you later. Bye bye.